if we're using the lock, drop, and rack technique, when we go to rack the slide, we will likely see or hear that casing fling out of the ejection port. However, since we may be preoccupied with things, if we're in a defensive context, you may not see or hear that thing fling out. If you have racked it more than three times and you haven't had an audible or visual cue that it flung out, then pull the slide to the rear, inspect the chamber. If you see that it's clear, that's good enough. Get the magazine back in, rack it, and then get back up on the threat. Let's also discuss limited visibility considerations. For example, if this is at night and you can't see what is going on, or you have grit in your eyes or for whatever reason that you can't see, if you did not hear the round fling out, then as you lock it to the rear and you rack it a couple of times, then you can take and put a pinky finger down into the chamber. If you feel the flat back of the casing, you know something's still in the chamber. That is an indicator that your extractor is likely inoperable, gummed up through lack of maintenance, broken, whatever the issue is, you're going to need a competent gunsmith to fix that. You're not going to be able to fix that Johnny on the spot in the fight of your life. If the issue is with the extractor either being broke or damaged or it's gummed up and it's not fully articulating back into the notch of the round, then every time you attempt to fix the malfunction using whichever technique, it's not going to pull that round out of the chamber. You're going to continuously have a double feed every single time that you attempt the drill. Nothing is going to fix it rickety tick. This is something that's going to take a gunsmith to rectify. You just went from having a firearm in your hand to now a blunt force trauma type instrument. If, however, you're able to get behind cover, you have a little bit of time and distance from the threat, I'll show you a technique where we can at least get it back into limited operation. We'll use the lock and drop technique. Now you'll see that there is still a piece of brass in the chamber. It's not extracting that round and nosing up and jiggling isn't getting it to fall free. If you have some type of a utility tool on your person you can reach back behind that lip the tip of this is doing the same function as that claw of the extractor would be where you just take and gently pull it out and it will fall free if you don't have such a tool on you then you can likely just use your fingernail I don't have long fingernails, but I can take and reach up inside here and it falls free. It's not in there with a whole lot of force, just too much force for it to fall free when you put the nose up and jiggle it. At this point, you'll take your magazine, reinsert it, rack the slide, and now you may only have a single shot operation, but one bullet is better than no bullets. Just remember, every single time that you engage, if it comes back to a double feed, then you may have to ditch behind cover and do the same thing over again. It is not ideal, but it's better than nothing. So those are some things to consider, but remember we only do that if we're back behind cover and we don't have somebody right here up on top of us. A single shot gun is better than no gun in the fight for your life. However, at the first indication that you're having any extraction issues, you wanna take it to somebody who can check that out and make sure that it is ready if you ever, God forbid, have to use it for self-defense.
All right, next topic.